Good evening, brothers and sisters. You know, uh, early on, Brother Patrick said that the, the CB students won't be here tonight. About 50 of them, you know. And uh, in my heart, I was saying that I was in China for 10 years. Sometimes we only have about four or five people coming uh, to worship the Lord and to hear what the Lord has for us. The Bible says when two or three are gathered together, he'll be in the midst of us, you know. So numbers is not the main thing. The main thing is our hearts, yeah? And let's pray and ask God to help us tonight to understand what we're going to hear, to, uh, you know, and to be able to bless others after receiving the blessings. Father, we just want to thank you in Jesus' name for tonight. You are a merciful God, a God that will always continue to love your people. So tonight as we listen to the message, may you help us all to grasp the important truth so that we can be a blessing to the nations. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Just now, we did a scripture reading on Lamentation chapter 3, verses 19 to 24. And we're going to look at these verses to see what we can learn tonight. Yeah? And the text that you read uh, was taken from the uh, ESV. You know, whenever I sing this song, it's in the other version, not the a cappella. The steadfast love of the Lord, yeah, never ceases. You know, whenever I sang that song, and whenever I sing it now, you know, I can almost feel that my soul is being uplifted every time. Because God never fails to uplift my soul whenever I'm down. And I believe God will do the same for you. Now, although many of you know Wendy and I as missionaries in China, you know, a title uh, many Christians respect and admire. But I want you to know tonight that we are an ordinary couple who just want to obey and do the things that please God. You know, sometimes we do things that are wrong. Sometimes we can do things that are right. But when we contrast the right and the wrong, would you be able to get a clear answer of what is ahead of you? You know, when we receive blessings, it's easy to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, right? But what happened when we don't receive the good things in life, it becomes more difficult to say praise the Lord first, right? We may say, God, what's happening? When we start to question God, and the Bible says that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, it can be very strange, right? So it's important for us to go to the context to understand what we can draw from the Bible and what God is trying to tell us, so that we are clear when we are walking with Christ. Now this evening, I will try to approach the scriptures in context, so that we do not just focus on only the good things in life as a blessing from God. You know, sometimes we, we take the scriptures out of context and everything that we say about this, the scripture is because we, we, we receive uh, good things yeah but not necessarily so now we'll be looking at these verses and hopefully we will learn about the steadfast faithfulness of God's love mercy and forgiveness Lamentations chapter 3 verses 19 to 24 may be many believers favorite verses 
it may be because it underlies some pressures. Okay, maybe I'm going to show the slide. All right. Okay, I'll just leave it there for you to see. Now, it underlies some precious and powerful principles about the God we serve and the life He gives us to live. The name of the book is Lamentations. It is an expression of grief and sorrow. Do you know that? And it has an underlying sense of regret when Jeremiah wrote it. And if you know, Jeremiah is also known as a weeping prophet. This book contains five poems and were written after the siege of Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem has fallen. Judah has lost its land. It is the lowest point in Judah's history. But yet, Jeremiah can write, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Can it be that he was wrong? You know, the Babylon army invaded Israel and Jerusalem was totally destroyed. They murdered the Jewish people and many were captured and taken to Babylon to work as slaves. Now, before this happened, Jeremiah actually predicted this would happen because for generations, the people had lived in rebellion to God. When we read the Old Testament, again and again we see a familiar verse. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his ancestors had done. If you cross-reference to 2 Kings uh, chapter 23 all the way to chapter 25, you know, can you imagine during the divided kingdom, you know, God chosen people. They are all together 38 kings and only five are good kings. The rest, 33 of them, are bad kings because they did evil in the sight of God. Now, I want you to really think about this particular verse, did evil in the sight of the Lord. These people are not pagans, you know. They are the chosen people of God. That means to say they are believers. And yet, they did evil in the sight of God. So, from this context, we know that Jeremiah wrote these verses in the face of adversity. Why? Because they have lost the land. No longer you are the citizen of your own land. It's important to know that because when we praise God, and especially when, you, when we use this Lamentation chapter 3, and then we say the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And we try to explain to a non-believer and trying to bring him in, hey, come, come to church, God is good. But this story is about adversity, lamentation. It's about facing adversity, and yet, Jeremiah said that the Lord is steadfast in his love for us. So we cannot use these verses blindly or wrongly when we try to uh, share with people. You know, I have a friend, a financial advisor, for many years. He, he is the one who wrote me into uh, this industry when I was much younger. And he's a good man, or rather he's a good uh, leader. Uh, he, 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 he was able to help me during the time when I was a newbie uh, and help me to, to really become a good uh, uh, financial advisor. But he was not a Christian. He was a staunch Buddhist. You know, <clears throat> whenever you talk to him about God, he said, no, no, no. 
get away from me. But after many years, I, I met him again. You know, we, we, after a while, I, I was not in the financial uh, industry. I met him, and then I saw him serving as a leader in church. He was so vibrant serving God, you know. Then I said, what happened? He said, wow, the God, is, uh, the God who saves me, he is good. And I want to serve him faithfully. But what happened? One day, he was unfairly treated by his superior, his boss, uh, his company. And the boss took away uh, his commission, his overriding commissions for many years because his payout was just too much. <laughs> he was so angry. And then I met him, I met him again and I said, hey, how's church? He said, don't talk to me about church. I said, why? Then he told me about his story and said, how can God do this to me? Wow. One moment, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Another moment, God, what are you doing? Oh, I tell you, it is not easy for myself as well when I'm faced with a lot of challenges in life. What about you? Yeah? What about you? Anyway, I want to ask you a question. Can we accept the good things from the Lord in our lives and not the bad ones? Think for a moment. If something bad happened to you today, can you accept it? Or if something happened to you good today, hallelujah. Let's take a look at this. Good things, you know, just a couple of them. Health, good health. A good job. Wow, God is so good to me. I, I've got a good job. What about family? We thank God for this. Yeah? A uh, wonderful spouse. Wendy, you know, and I have been married for 29 years right now. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> good spouse. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Can you say praise God for your spouse, please, if those are, are of you that are married? Yeah? <laughs> Boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, I, I found a boyfriend. I found a girlfriend. Material things. I'm so blessed with so much. Wonderful. I have, I just have so much. And of course, thank God, someone dear is still living. It, it could be your mom, it could be your dad, it could be a friend. No, it's not wrong to praise God for all these good things. Don't get me wrong, okay? Because in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 to 16, through him that let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, and that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So over here, it says that we have to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. Yeah? So, receiving good things and praising God has to be part of our lives. It has to be. But what about the unpleasant things that happen in our lives? Do we praise God or do we question him? Let's look at this one. Huh? Let's contrast the earlier examples. Now, what happens if you do not have good health? Recently, I, I, I was diagnosed with, uh, I'm quite confused with this uh, diagnosis. I'm diagnosed with functional disease. It's a kind of migraine, a type of migraine. You know, I, I, I told Brother Patrick I, I cannot stand below because if I stand level uh, ground with you, uh, I have this problem. I, I can just feel giddy. Sometimes I will spin. Anyway, I'm going to ask for a second opinion yeah, to find out whether this is the right diagnosis. 
So, I'm going through this. Am I going to praise God? Or am I going to question God? God, you know, I, I, I'm still young. I still can serve you for many years. You've got to give me a good body, you know. <laughs> Do you talk to God like this? Yeah? No? And what about jobless? One moment I have a job, one moment I'm jobless. Do you still praise God? I was serving in this church before, and every time after the service, then there will be an invitation for people to come up to the front to pray. So this young man came, uh, and, and I was standing there. He, he came to me, and, and I asked him, what can I pray for you? Say, pray for my job. I say, what's wrong with your job? Uh, you see, I'm losing my job. Before I know God, okay, before I know God, I've got everything. But now that I know God, I'm losing my job. Wow. <laughs> How are you going to pray for this person at that very moment? You see, our understanding of Scripture may not be correct. That's why we question God sometimes. Some people do not have a family. They lost their family at a very young age and stay often and often. How about those that never, uh, who stay single? Not because they choose to stay single. I know a lot of single friends, not because they choose to. Do we thank God for being single? God, I'm so jealous. <laughs> no boyfriend, no girlfriend. Cannot afford many material things. Losing someone dear. God, how can that be? You know, I believe most people will tell you it's easy for them to thank God when things are going well. Likewise for me. But it's not easy to praise God when things becomes, become difficult. To be honest, it's much harder for me to thank and praise God when I have suffered loss, persecution, or even hardship. If we are not sure why is that so, the Bible can teach us. The Bible teaches us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, God words say, give thanks in all circumstances. All circumstances. Can you say all circumstances? Can you say all circumstances? <laughs> Thank you. That means to say good or bad, we've got to give thanks and because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and for me. You know, knowing the scripture in its context can help us to know that we can rely on God for all things, be it good or bad. I don't have time to tell you my story. Maybe one day I will, but not up here over a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll tell you my story and... The, the trauma years that I went through, it was painful, but it was good. Realizing the difficulty of thanking God in the hard times is what makes Jeremiah's words so comforting. Not all the times the bad things that happen to us were due to our wrongdoings, you know. However, we want to stay in context to the book of Lamentations and we find that the bad things that Judah went through were due to disobedience. We can appreciate the scripture more when we understand the context. And Judah was disobedient because they turned away from God. The people turned away from God and were living ungodly lives. The society was decaying at the time. There was a shedding of innocent blood. 
there were unholy alliances with foreign nations. What about us today? I know we are in church today and everything seems to be okay, right? And we may be living holy lives, but what about the people outside the church? You know, if God can punish His own chosen people, what more do you think those people that are outside His church? Very scary. The society at the time was decaying during the divided kingdom. What about our society today? Are we any better than before? If you are like me and you read the local news, I, I like to read today online because these days you don't buy newspaper. You just go to your phone. You will find our society is just as bad, if not worse. Cheating, divorce cases, cyber theft, vices, rape cases, and many more. What's happening to our society? Can we praise God for all these things? You know, we may not be shedding innocent blood directly or physically, but when we do not share the gospel to someone we know, you know what? He will be lost forever on judgment day. So are we innocent before God? Can we be like Paul who declared he was not to be blamed for anyone who did not listen to his persuasions? Maybe we should ask this question. When was the last time we share the gospel of salvation, the good news of Jesus to a lost soul? You know, Wendy and I, sometimes, I mean, we talk about our friends. Uh, when we are in church long enough, most of our friends, or some, is, some may even say, all of our friends are Christians. Wow. What happened? Are we responsible for the blood of those we do not share the good news? I leave the answer to yourself and for to myself as well. Number two, they scorned Jeremiah for preaching the word of God. You know, Judah honored false prophets and mocked, scorned Jeremiah. They do not want to be accountable for their sinful ways of living. They choose to worship idols instead of the one and only true God. And to make matter worse, even the religious people sanctioned it. They agreed, oh, it's okay. How many persuasions did we hear from the pulpit here over the last few years? We have the elders, we have the deacons, we have the teachers. They will come up to the pulpit, they will prepare their sermon, and they spend so much time trying to understand what God is trying to say and bring it to the people. But how many of us remember what was preached? When we do not respond to the call of duty as a Christian, we are indirectly mocking and scorning the preacher. Do you know that? It can be indirect, very strong words, right? But it is the truth. Most of the time we may think that idol worshipping has to do with going to other gods, going to a temple. Other than a true, live, true and living God. But do you remember the rich young man in Luke chapter 18, verses 18 to 23? This rich young man came and asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, you know the answer. He said, give up your all and follow me. 
the rich man couldn't do it because he has great wealth. He has accumulated all the wealth and now he cannot give it up. It seems that material wealth was his idol. So idol worshipping is not just going to a temple or worshipping a foreign god. It can be something near to you, something that you hold on to dear life. You know, we've got to ask ourselves this question. Just now we were talking about, you know, if, if we do not share to a lost soul, are we responsible for them? You know, are we holding on too tightly to our material things that we spend too much time doing the wrong things and putting God's mission secondary? Let's look at the third one. Judah did the op opposite things of what God said. You know, God wanted them to live in unity in peace and prosperity, and to practice justice. But in Judah, there wasn't justice. Instead, the religious people, the political people, and even among the commoners practiced greed and corruption. You know, it got to the point that God said, enough is enough. Okay? And he no longer wanted to be part of their own doing. He left them to their own devices. In the end, the city of Jerusalem was destroyed and the people were taken captive. Today, are we living in unity? Do we agree with one another, living, agree with a common goal to press on for, for Jesus? Or are we too stubborn to change because everyone thinks he is right? Do you live in peace with one another? Or are you a quarrelsome, quarrelsome person who must always make a point? Are you living in prosperity? If you are rich, do you give it to the needy? Yeah? Are you a man and woman who practice justice? Some important question for us tonight, isn't it? No, it's important to know the background of Jeremiah's writings for us really to appreciate tonight's message. Before you feel discouraged, I just want you to know Lamentation was not written so that we are discouraged. Oh, you know, I'm not up to God's standard. No, I have good news for you. Lamentation can teach us that hope can remain even though one can go through trials and challenges. And it's important to strengthen our faith and hope and love and confidence to be reminded of the steadfast love and faithfulness under these horrible conditions that Judah went through. It's also important to understand that Judah had come to ruin through their own fault, despite repeated warnings from Jeremiah. The fact that their destruction was their own fault, you know what? God continues to extend His mercy. Because in later part of the story, we know that God allows them to go back to rebuild Jerusalem. Early on, I share, you know, some of the question, you know, is uh, actually what Judah has done, reflecting it, whether we are like this as well. But if we do things that are against God, I want you to know, even for myself, we have hope because God is a merciful God. We can experience God's love when we turn back to God, repent of our sins. So lamentations remind us of three things about the faithfulness of God. The first one is God's love will never change. 
God's love is unwavering. His love is not only long term, it's permanent, it's forever. And this promise to the people of Judah proves later when they return back to build Jerusalem. You know, for us today, we are thankful that God sent His Son, Jesus, to earth to die for us. Because He loves us, He, he, he knows that we are living in sin and we cannot be reconciled to Him unless He goes to the cross. So this shows that God's love will never change even when we're going through trials and challenges, even those trials and challenges may be of our own doings. Number two, or the second one, you will have all the mercy you need. Jeremiah said, his mercies never come to an end. You know, in the book of Romans, Paul talks about this. He says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Romans 7, 15 and verse 18. You know, if Paul, the Apostle Paul, struggled or struggled with this, then you and I certainly will too, right? What is our hope? The mercy of God. The never-ending mercy of God extended to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Some of us may think we cannot be loved by God because of our sins, especially when we continue to do the wrong things. Have you ever felt that way? Sometimes I will cry to God. I say, God, why am I doing the same old wrong things again and again and again? But good thing... You know, I keep pressing on and asking God to show me the way. But there are people who say, no, I'm just not perfect for God. I'm too sinful. These are the people that we need to go and help them, to share with them, hey, no, God's mercy is forever. It can be extended to them. You know, in China, when uh, we meet on Sunday, some of the, some of them will come. Uh, some of them come from uh, some denomination, so they will take the Lord's Supper uh, once every month. Some may take once a year. Huh? Some can even take at home. You know, <laughs> they will do it at home. And I told them, I say, hey, do you know that the scriptures show us that whenever we meet together, as often as we meet. We should partake of this blessing from God because this shows exactly the mercy of God in our lives. God knows that today you may uh, do something wrong, but He has already prepared for us to cleanse you and me by the precious blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go to the third one. Every day is a new beginning. You know, it doesn't matter what happened yesterday because you can't do anything to change it. I can't change my past. It's gone. <laughs> it's, it's a black mark already. But it cannot hurt you anymore. Is in the past because right now you are a new creature I am a new creature in Jesus Christ and if you mess up yesterday today you can say that part of my life is over don't you come and condemn me because Jesus has forgiven my sin don't let anyone condemn us for the wrong things that we did yesterday and you can always say I'm going to do better you know, the most important day for any Christian is today. Today, live it out. And it does no good to cry in the regrets 
of yesterday or worry in fear of tomorrow. Because today is all that matters. And with God, can we say this together, the last point? With God, every day is a new beginning. So, in conclusion, the next time when we sing this song, I cannot sing the a cappella way, but the other w version. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. When you sing this song, remember lamentations, the context of it. Make sure you know it, that the poem was written during adversity so that you and I can appreciate the steadfast love of the Lord. Once we realize this amazing love from God, which is extended to all because of His faithfulness to all of us, to mankind, even to the lost one, He is continuing calling them back we will live a more fulfilling life as a believer. Really, if you really know, you will live a fulfilled Christian life. The sooner you and I understand it, we can then share to someone who will give us an opportunity so that we can usher them into the kingdom of God. Isn't that good? That you can actually make it so clear for a sinner that God's mercy is unending. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases.